Let's look at getting started using Google Tag Manager for mobile iOS SDK. I've already downloaded the SDK. Let me go ahead and unzip it. And you can see I get a directory with a library folder that contains several .h files, as well as a .a file containing the source code, sorry, containing the binary code, a readme and change log for this particular version of the SDK, and then an examples directory containing one example, cute animals. Let me go ahead and open this application, and I'm going to run it so we can get an idea of what it looks like. So it quickly compiles. As we're looking, so it's actually using the .a file and the .h files that we saw in the finder. It's using a relative location to find those. If we go look at the application, we see what it provides basically is some cute pictures of different animals. Cute bunnies, cute cats, and I'm not sure you'd call them cute, but tigers as well. The configuration that happens on this application is the adjective cute here for each of the various kinds of animals. And then as well, the title that occurs here. Let me show you that. So we've got a file, gtm xxxx, that's the ID, although it's really a fake ID, and there's a property that's associated with that. What you can see is we have the, an adjective key which has associated with it the value cute, and again that's used in front of cute cats, cute bunnies, and so on, and a title which is cute animals, which is shown at the top of the main screen. How is this actually used? Well, if we go to our application delegate, we can see here that when our application did finish launching, we go ahead and initialize the tag manager. We set a logger as well, so that we see not only just the default error and warnings, but also any info or debug or verbose messages. And then we open our container. We pass in the container ID, the tag manager, a timeout, which defaults to two seconds, and a notifier, which can be used to be notified when the container is ready. This comes back as a future. Okay, so the future is not the container, but the container will be available from the future when we call get. So what's happening basically is that in one, in one thread, it's going ahead and loading up the container, reading that default container, that plist, reading the uh, any saved version of the container that may have been downloaded from the network earlier. In this case, it won't have such a container since it's the first time we're running our app. And also then going to the network to try and load the container. In this case, that'll fail because there's no container with the container ID gtmxxxx. So it'll end up just using that default container with the plist we saw. So what happens is we go ahead and start doing our initialization. Load the images, set up a window, and then when we're ready, we call future get and that will return the container. It'll block, if necessary, if the container is still in the process of being opened, but at most according to the timeout that has been specified. And then once we've got the container, we can go ahead and use it. How is it used? Well, let's look, for instance, in the category view. In the category view, we retrieve from the container, we do string for key, pulling out adjective. So that's going to get back cute. And then, out of the parts in our application, we ask for the title, and it gets back cute animals. So what happens if we want to actually configure this application remotely? Well, we should really be using a real container ID, and I happen to have created a container ID already. The container ID is gtm-z84j. So let's go ahead and rename the xxxx and then copy it into our project. Unlock it. Remove the old plist, which isn't there anymore. And then finally we've got to go to our app delegate and change the container ID that we're trying to load. 
C8 port here. So now what will happen is when we run, we'll get a different adjective and a different title as they have been specified in the container tag UI. And in C, that's what we get. So the title was set as fancy title, and the adjective was funny, and we get those values now. So now we look at the monkeys. Not really that funny. That one is slightly more funny. So that is it really for containers. We'll have, we have other screencasts that show you how to actually create the container in the, conta the Tag Manager UI, and others that look at things like logging, other sorts of information. Thanks very much.